I'm Nathan Gobes. This is Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm filling in for Jeffrey Davis this morning. Uh, I want to start by thanking MTP Software, the uh, uh, leader in sports, CRM, and entertainment industry, um, for hosting us here this morning. And our next guests, Allison Rogers, founder and CEO, and Kelsey Shaken, operations coordinator at Coffee Cup Collective. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks for having us here. Yes, thank you. So uh, start by giving us the, uh, the rundown on what, uh, what is the Coffee Cup Collective. You've brought one of your, your cups and, uh, and a little, uh, what do you call those? Things? A sleeve. A sleeve, <laughs> yeah, yep, Coffee yeah. Cup sleeve. So yeah, tell us about it. Sure, so Coffee Cup Collective is a circular economy for reusable coffee cups. So think of bike sharing, but for coffee cups. Um, and the problem that we're setting out to solve is that uh, each year, 120 billion single-use coffee cups are used and thrown away in the U.S. Wow. In the U.S. alone. In the mm -hmm. U.S. alone. So wow. 600 billion globally. And so these cups either end up in our landfills, our oceans, our city sidewalks, places that they really don't belong. So um, we have set out to figure out a convenient alternative to those single-use options. And that's the service that we're providing. So uh, get get a little more into the service with it because I think that's really where uh, you know this really gets interesting because it's right. not just you know certainly there are a lot of people who have reusable cups but I think you guys are offering something a little different. Exactly. So Kelsey and I are both guilty, or in the yeah. past we're guilty of having <laughs> cabinets full of reusable cups. Who isn't? Right. Yeah. I don't you get think, them at I don't every think mine's conference. left my strainer for over a week. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And. Um, I found myself never remembering to bring my reusable coffee cup with me, never wanting to lug it around with me, never wanting to wash it at work. And really, we realized I wasn't alone in, in having those pain yeah. points. So the service that we're providing is that we, if you subscribe to our service, there's always a cup available for you at a partnering cafe, office building, college campus. Whoever, whoever we're partnering with, there's a cup for you. You can check it out kind of like a library book, have seven days to use it, and then you can return it to one of our drop-off locations. And then our team that Kelsey manages <laughs> comes and collects the cups and takes them for washing in our commercial dishwashing And then facility. we redistribute them throughout Interesting. the cafes. Yeah, so I can walk into any, you said, partnering uh, cafe and uh, pick up a cup, and then I can return it. To, does it have to be the same place or any no. other one that's also partnering? That's exactly. amazing. Yeah, exactly. And the point of it, I mean, you can keep it for seven days, but most people don't want to. So that's, right, right. we give you seven days in case you forget it. But a lot of people, it's like 45 minutes. <laughs> and then give it back. Yeah. Do they get, uh, do you get a charge if you don't return it? To... Yes. Okay. So after that seven days, we do charge you $17. So you just bought the cup and you can keep it. Um, but we, the whole point is really, it's a circular economy. The mm -hmm. cup, you don't, we don't want you to own the cup. We want to have it in circulation so it can be used time and time and time again. Mm. Yeah, and I understand there's a little bit of uh, tracking that's involved with the cups too. I apologize. I'm very familiar with you this because yeah. I was at an event that you guys uh, helped uh, supply some of the cups for, which was great. Uh, everybody got to use a nice cup while they were there instead of a disposable one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so tell me a little bit about that and then we can get into some more. Yeah, so we have QR codes on the bottom of the cups that are associated with the cup. As you can, as you can see, they all have mm -hmm. fun names and basically... Yeah. The subscriber has also has a QR code, so that's how we link the cup with the subscriber. Your cup is checked out to you via that QR code, and then we know you have it. And um, your app also lets you know that you have yeah. the, the cups, uh, when they're due back, where you check them out from. How many days you got left to, okay. to exactly. have it. So it's like, oh, well, the, there is one that's rolling around my car. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I thought what you guys did for the event was very cool, um, really supporting that event. And, I, you know, the sleeve that you've brought, I noticed earlier that it's got, you know, the company logo on right. the back, which is, I think, really nice. So um, is that another aspect, you know, event support and, uh, you exactly. know, I think, did you mention these, you can also get cups in um, some larger corporations that have partnered with you guys? Right. So we kind of have two sides of the business. 
One side is the service and pr having um, partner cafes, partner office buildings, the, and the like. The other side is the corporate sponsorship. So that's an opportunity for corporates to put their name or their logo mm -hmm. on a cup or on okay, many cups. Okay, so you can get it on the cup as well, not yeah. just on a sleeve. Exactly. Cool. Um, and then we, because we do track each cup, we are able to do a lot of metrics and a lot of data analysis mm -hmm. on the utilization of the cups with your brand on it. Mm -hmm. So we can do sustainability reports for our corporate sponsors. We can do kind of like market analytics for our corporate sponsors as mm. well. Um, and so this is a really cool opportunity to be kind of like the city bike or mm -hmm. city bank equivalent. You can have your brand on here and really be associated with the sustainability movement. Interesting. So about how many um, cafes and locations are you guys in currently? So we're in our sh soft launch period. Right. We are um, just a month into our soft launch. Oh, wow. It's very, very it's cool. So at the event, I must have caught you really at the, be the real yeah, beginning. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and so right now we're live in two, but mm -hmm. by in the next... End of January, it'll, it'll be, be in like four more. Yeah. Okay, okay. So Expanding. we're rolling out quickly. And you said you have a co uh, commercial dishwashing uh, mm -hmm. area for that. Exactly. Is that in entirely based in uh, New England? Do you think you're going to stick with the Boston and New England area or... Is there hopes to expand and grow? Definitely hopes to expand and grow. Um, Boston is our home, so Boston we know best. Um, and that's why we're starting here. We know that this, there's demand for this in the city of Boston. Mm -hmm. But um, frankly, the West Coast is beating us to this. Um, the, the West Coast has started to pass taxes and bans on single-use mm. cups. So do you see competition entering the market? Or are yes. you guys, okay. Yeah, so there is competition, which is good because right. it gives us opportunity to learn. They haven't invested in some of the same things that we have. For example, they don't have a robust app platform, um, and that is a barrier to entry for, mm -hmm. for folks. Um, so we were, we were able to learn from others that are in this space. That's the good news. Um, it also validates our idea, right? If there were no other people in this space, um, mm -hmm we would be the only crazies out there. And, <laughs> and that's a big uphill battle that I don't think right. we want to fight alone. And I think uh, it, it would get, um, I don't want to say difficult, but maybe interesting to figure out the logistics as you expand into other cities, uh, especially in terms of the, the washing of the cups. You know, aren't, are you going to have to get dishwashing facilities in each of the cities that you're sending right, in? Right, right. So I uh, think the question that you're asking is, are we going to turn into yeah. the rent the runway equivalent of dishes? Like, right. isn't rent the runway the biggest dry cleaner now in the world? Uh, I think, I think that was, certainly, yeah. yeah I, I think that was the stat I read recently. So are we going to become the biggest dishwashing facility in the world? Frankly, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to use partnerships. So existing kitchens and dishwashing uh, services okay. that Utilizing are Utilizing infrastructure that's already there. Exactly. Our quest for being as sustainable as possible. Exactly. So that's whether that's having some partner cafes that do have the capacity mm -hmm. to do the dishwashing to help out with some dishwashing, college campuses who have the capacity to do dishwashing, um, that sort of thing. So right now, what do you see as your biggest barriers to scalability? Ooh. Is it um, uh, is there any uh, have ca have cafes and coffee shops been receptive? Um, is it on the logistics side? I think the app is pretty robust. You know, where is it that uh, that you guys are? You know, obviously very early stages. So yeah. you know, it's like there's only so many things you can do at once. But um, what do you guys see as the barriers that uh, keeping you from? So I would say this is a paradigm shift, right? We have to redefine what mm -hmm. to go means. Um, so that's a big education marketing push. Um, that's that, a good point because yeah, I think a lot of people think of the you know paper or plastic cup as an ideal to go because it's you know they can they can pick it up at the coffee shop and they don't even have to think about it. But I think in a lot of ways, what you guys do is very similar. There's so many people that have that morning routine. They go to a coffee shop and usually one specific one that's right across the street from where they work or exactly. where they live mm -hmm. or on exactly. the way. So. You know, I, I, I think you're right that it is it is about a paradigm shift and, and getting the word out there. Exactly. And so we um, so that that's one piece of it. I'd say cafes are actually really receptive. They get that's it. Good. They get that the better that their bottom line is or the more revenue, the more cups they sell, the worse their environmental impact. Is there any cost to them? Because uh, I would think that they would it's a 
value proposition. They can save money. You know, the the cost of cups is, you know, it's like the cost of coffee, cups, and overhead. You know, those yeah. are the three things they deal with. So, um, And so in our cafe agreements, we ask for at least 25 cents off to our customers. Okay. Some cafes give more, but they, it, 25 is like the lowest. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And that's really the only cost to them right now. Hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, of course, so that the, the Consumers get 25 cents or more off, mm -hmm. but um, what is the cost of the subscription to them? To the cafe to, or, or the to the, the customer, to the people signing up to the app. So if I wanted to go sign up now and uh, start p using Coffee Cup Collective, how much would that cost me? Um, so we have two subscription options. Mm -hmm. One is the monthly unlimited, so you can just go crazy, check out as many cups as you want, mm -hmm. um, and that's $9.99 a month. Mm -hmm. And then we have an occasional membership, which limits you to five cups a month. And that's three ninety nine a month. Yeah, I like that. Different options. Yeah, with the unlimited, if you have coffee three times a day, you could end up paying it off pretty quickly. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. Which I mean, my mom used to do that, so <laughs> yeah, it's not unheard of. Well, that's interesting. Um, I, I, we are running short on time, but before we go, um, I guess so. Kelsey, are you also a founder, or are you just? I'm is the it just operations Allison? coordinator, okay. so I just. Get Basically everything done. Basically get everything done right. that needs to get done. <laughs> so then I guess my question is more for Allison. Um, yeah. What got you into this and kind of what was your background before this? Um, obviously, there's a big uh, big part of this is sustainability. Right. Um, and so I can understand that. But uh, in terms of like launching the business and uh, your experiences before that, Sure. Talk about that. So Kelsey and I are actually both sailors. Mm -hmm. We grew up okay. on the water, sailing around, and we both have this love for being on the water. We both the studied. Ocean. Yeah, yeah, everything. Oh. <laughs> she did marine bio. I did geography and coastal marine studies in college. Um, so See, this is why I asked, sorry, I asked you if you were a co-founder because <laughs> I could tell you two were such good friends. You yeah. Had that, you had that kind of vibe, but uh, Yeah, we bonded on. over the fact that we were both sailors. Nice. I sailed in high school and college and just also in general, and then Great. was also a marine bio major, so the ocean was kind of nice. in my blood since I was younger. So uh, how did you move that, transition that into, uh, into sure. this? Sure. So my dream job out of college was to work for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in their um, Ocean and Coastal Protection Unit, and I did that. It was an amazing opportunity, but I also realized that I am a creative person, and I like to affect change in ways that are not regulatory. So I pivoted into management consulting where I got some more mm -hmm. managerial muscle mm -hmm. or know-how um, and then came up with this idea, frankly, in 2013 mm -hmm. and s slept on it for many years um, before I was ready to pursue it. Yep. Um, as, as with most entrepreneurs, it takes time for that, that seed to grow into even a sapling. Exactly. And in 2013, it was too early. Mm -hmm. The straw movement hadn't happened. That's a good point. Biodegradable. Hasn't yeah, exactly. Yet. <laughs> the biodegradable mo movement hadn't happened, so I would it was say too even early. the the app uh, culture. You know, it's we true. didn't have That's Uber. A great point. Uh, I 2013. I'm not even sure how far along Netflix was, and uh, you know, That's which really point. kind of broke Zipcar into subscription uh, models. I think Zipcard did exist, but okay. barely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and not as not as widely used, and and you know now we've got bike sharing that exactly. wasn't around really. Exactly. So interesting, interesting. Yeah. Um, and my last question is, you know, I see that you guys have a pretty good sized team behind you, and you've got a board as well. Do you want to talk about um, how jumping into all of that and really you know bringing the infrastructure and the team all together, how that experience has kind of been? Because I know a lot of entrepreneurs out there, you know, there's. There's a difference from when you're 2013 you and you've got this idea versus uh, now almost 2020 you. And I have some that... gray hairs now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But, um, you know, that to really bring it from, you know, the idea to uh, in action. So what was that experience like? And maybe, you know, some thoughts along the way. So I started to vocalize the idea in late 2017. And um, I was shocked when people were receptive to the idea. Um, and then it kind of, when I started to vocalize it outside my close friend group mm -hmm. and other people were receptive, I was like, oh no, I think I actually <laughs> have to do this now. Oh no, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Told enough people it's happening. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so for better or worse, I like to talk to people and quickly started to grow my network and get some great opportunities um, to be in accelerator programs and just meet some other movers and shakers in the Boston area. 
Um, so I was able to build the board of advisors, which has been okay. invaluable. So would you think it was mostly about just uh, networking, getting yourself out there and talking to uh, people that also got excited about your idea? Yeah, I think it was um, speaking to pain points people could um, mm -hmm. real, could wrap their heads around. They, yeah. they also suffered from those pain points and wanted to solve the problem, wanted yeah. to be part of the solution. I think just about every working professional can understand how many coffee cups exactly. we go through without even hearing the, you know, all the numbers that exactly. you guys have. Exactly, and we're not ev even including those water cooler cups and, you know, those... That's right. Those, uh, those, exactly. Yeah. You're guilty of it. I know, yeah. <laughs> I am. I think everybody is. So that's why we, we should all sign up for uh, the Coffee Cup Collective. Uh, at least check it out. And uh, Allison and Kelsey, if somebody wanted to check out Coffee Cup Collective, sign up and start using the cups, how would they go about that? And Download the app. app. <laughs> <laughs> that was some good unison there. Um, and so it, uh, Android and Apple? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. And uh, if anybody wanted to get in touch with you guys, how could they do that? Um, feel free to reach out via email or LinkedIn. Um, our emails are on the website, um, and we, we answer. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're nice people, we <laughs> promise. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> last thing that I just thought of, you know, you said you've got, um, you're in two cafes, but that you've got the corporate sponsorship angle as mm -hmm. well. Uh, is that uh, option up and running? If some of our yes. listeners who, you know, a lot of whom are business owners, if they're interested in getting some coffee cups into their office, uh, they could reach out and do that? They, and and the, I should be clear, the corporate sponsorship, d the cups actually, the benefit is that they're part of our whole network. Mm -hmm. So you get your logo in places that are not your office. You mm. get your brand outside of your office and, I and associated with sustainability. And yes, that information is up on the website, but great. also feel free to reach out and I can provide more. We can both provide more yeah, information. Well, it's great speaking to you. Uh, remind everyone, uh, this is uh, Allison Rogers, founder and CEO, and Kelsey Shaken, uh, operations coordinator, Coffee Cup Collective. Uh, this has been Radio Entrepreneurs. We're going to uh, take a break and we'll be back after these messages.